Hey folks, it's Bacon, and I'm here with a quick tutorial. I've been promising you this on my stream, and I'm excited to bring it to you here today. <clears throat> so, we have my desktop here that you're staring at, and we have a little program here that I'll pull up called MultiMC. This is an awesome program for managing your Minecraft saves, for dealing with mods and texture packs and doing all sorts of things. I use it constantly and I highly recommend it. So, this is something like it'll look like when you first uh, install it and launch it, though um, there won't all of these icons here. This, this window will be empty when you first start. So to get started, you need to make a new instance. So each one of these icons is a, a completely separate Minecraft install and in a whole totally different folder in on your hard drive so to make a new one you go up to this little icon here and uh, click to add a new instance you give it a name tutorial minecraft and there so it defaults to the latest which as of today is 147 if you want a different one click change version and you can see here you can pick any version of Minecraft. If you check the box here for show nostalgia versions, you can go all the way the freak back. Alpha. You can go back to Alpha. I think it probably might not run if you don't have the right version of Java or something like that. I don't know, but but it's there, and this includes all the snapshots. If you ch click check check both of those boxes. You get all the snapshots from the beginning of time, every snapshot that's ever happened. Pick whatever version you want, click OK, and then click OK again, and there we go. So down at the bottom of the list here, Tutorial Minecraft. And when you try to run it, it'll pop up. And the reason that this is pre-populated is because I've got other instances and this saves it like as the default. But, you know, you type in your new username and password, click OK, and it's going to go out to Minecraft websites and download the files all automatically, get the proper version, and install it for you in a brand new folder. And now it's starting to run the game, and so you've got this little console window here that kind of tells you what's going on. This is really useful because, especially when you start playing with mods, if anything messes up, the, you can see the errors in this list here. Uh, and as you can see, this is a brand new instance, so like all the settings are completely, like, I never play with view bobbing on, but, you know, that's the default, so it turns it on there. All that sort of stuff. Sound is at 100%, and brightness is all the way dark. All, all those annoying uh, default settings. But there you go. So we're going to quit that. Now let's say we wanted to add a mod to that. Uh, real easy to do. So you take uh, your one this here, Tutorial Minecraft. That's the one we just ran. You right click. Got all sorts of options here. We're going to go to Edit Mods. And you get this nifty little window. So the best way to, to deal with mods, or at least the way that I use all the time with MultiMC, is a little program called Forge. Forge is just a, a platform that lets you install other mods, basically. And so right here on the right, there's a button, MC Forge. Click that, and it's going to automatically go out to the web and show you all the versions of Minecraft Forge that you can download. The, the build numbers in this list are based on what's compatible with your version of Minecraft. So, for example, this build number, is the, mo the one at the top, is the most recent. If you're trying to use a mod that requires an older version, then you're going to have to roll your Minecraft version back, and you'll see a different list here. But anyway, so I'll t pick the most recent there, click OK, and it's automatically downloading Forge, and boom, it's installed. You don't know messing around, and that's right in the Minecraft jar. Like, if you've ever installed mods in the end of the Minecraft jar, it's obnoxious. you got to zip stuff and unzip stuff and drag files around and merge stuff, and it's annoying. None of that. Boom, we're done. We've just installed Forge. All right, so what else do we want to add? Let's add a new mod. And it gives you the, uh, the browse window here. Let's uh, look through our mods. We've got a big list of them here installed. Um, let's pick a little something called Optifine. 
if that's uh, if that's the right version, I think it is. So let's so let's see. We'll pick that. Click open. There's Optifine. Let's see if it worked. And I remember trying to install Optifine without this program, doing it manually. It is obnoxious. I could never get it to work right. It was really annoying. Problem solved. All right, so let's go into options, video settings. Boom, look at that. You can tell that it's installed and working because there's more options in this list. That means Optifine is now installed. Another way to check is there's this little button here now that says Mods. Click on that. Optifine's right there at the top of the list. That easy. All right, let's install one more just for completion sake. Edit Mods. We're going to click Add and we're going to add Raise Minimap. A lot of people have trouble getting Raise Minimap and Optifine working together. Well, now they're both in that list. Click Close. Open that up. Wait for it to launch. Come on now, you can do it, you can do it. Launch. Rhymes with lunch. Alright, click Mods. And there you go. Raise Minimap. That means it's installed and working. And if I were to take the time to make a new world, it would be right there. That's all you got to do to get Raise Minimap and Optifine working together. Now, it gets even easier than that. So let's say I've got a window open to where my mods are. So I've got a bunch of mods in this folder here, right? So we'll just leave that, we'll leave that up there. Now, if I go in here and edit mods... All I have to do is take a mod from over here and drag and drop. Boom. Just like that. That's all you got to do in install. So, um, let's say, um, yeah, bacon mod. Well, here, here's what we'll do. Let me explain these tabs. So, this is all in the jar. When you're, every mod It'll tell you where it needs to go. Some of them need to go into the jar when you install it. Some of them go into the mods folder. And some of them go in the core mods folder. And the documentation for the plugin you want to install should tell you where to install it in the installation instructions. Most Forge ones end up going in the mods folder, such as the bacon mod. So take the bacon mod, drag it in there. Boom. Bacon mod. We're done. That's all you got to do. Super, super easy. Other uh, uh, quick things to note is um, there's some properties you can change. So you go to settings, window size. So if you're a streamer, you want your Minecraft to show up in an exact size if you've got your window set just so for your streaming software. Uncheck the default there, and you can choose what size you want the window to be when it launches. Super easy. That eliminated an entire other program that I used to use. Uh, super great. Other great thing that you should know is over here, Java. It defaults, Minecraft and Java default to using way less uh, RAM than I find optimal. When I'm playing with mods, I like a lot of RAM. So uh, I've set my default uh, to be pretty high. And you can uncheck that and just type in whatever. So the minimum and maximum RAM that your Minecraft install is going to be using. You might be shocked at how little RAM that is, especially if you're doing FTB. Uh, so I've got mine to go from 2 gigs to 4 gigs, and it works good for me. Other things you can do up here where we added the new instance. Drop down here. You can import an existing Minecraft folder. You can make a copy of the instance you've already done. And you can also import right from the FTB launcher so that you don't have to use the FTB launcher anymore. Uh, another great thing to this is you can you can pick where the saves go to, which means um, you can I've got all mine saved in a Dropbox folder, so they all get in, instantly backed up offsite, and I can play them, pull them down on another computer if I want to play it that way. I'm going to be showing you more about Multi MC later, and uh, this is a great way to get start. Highly highly recommend the program. So be sure to check out my stream at Twitch TV slash. Bacon underscore donut. I'm there just about every night. And until then.